Elephants are probably the most recognisable animal on this planet, and also one of the most intelligent. Their behaviour and communication is truly fascinating, with much still mystery to us even today. However, as you would expect from the largest land animal, elephants have a huge impact on their environment. Here in South Africa, there aren't any free-roaming elephants left in the wild. You find them now either in national parks or private game reserves, and this is due to human intervention. Whereas previously their migration routes would be long, coming all the way down from Mozambique along the eastern coast to the Tetsikama Forest. Now that no longer happens. I'm here in Scotia Game Reserve on the eastern cape of South Africa to find out a little bit more about what happens when elephants are kept in restricted spaces and how that affects the bush and the environment. I'm meeting up with Etienne Senecal, Headfield Guide at Scotia, who has a real interest in this topic and has kindly agreed to share his knowledge with me. So tell me a little bit about Scotia Game Reserve. Scotia Game Reserve is about 2,000 hectares, uh, it's situated in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. Uh, this is all, all this private game is reserved in the Eastern Cape and in the Western Cape. Since when have you reintroduced elephants here? Uh, we reintroduced elephants back here about two years and seven months ago. And what was the bush like prior to the elephants being introduced? Uh, this bush was impenetrable, nothing could go through it. The only few species that utilised it was uh, bushbuck, bushpick, blue diker, some uh, common diker, uh, predators, jackal and caracal. Since the elephants were introduced, what kind of changes have you seen in the bush and in the environment? Um, since the elephants have been back, uh, they've been forcing their way through the bush. Uh, we could see pathways in two months already. And what kind of positive impacts does that have on animal species here? Well, uh, because of the elephants have been back, there's a lot of dung lying around. Um, we've seen, uh, we've seen the mongooses and honey badgers using the elephant dung, um, eating insects inside it and monkeys and baboons uh, scratching for seedling some, uh, some plant leaves and some fruit bits. And um, we've got an endangered species flightless dung beetle here. Uh, because of all the dung that's been around, uh, their numbers has increased enormously. And because of the elephant paths, uh, the kudu and the, uh, and the buffalo are making use of the elephant paths now. Mm. And uh, they find more shelter. And what about plant species? Have you seen any benefits to the plants in the area? Yeah, because of this thicket or this bush that's so thick, during the years uh, it's just got thicker and thicker and plants and the leaves are competing for sunlight and underneath there's no life, no foliage. Um, and when the elephants have been introduced back, uh, they open up the bush, the sunlight's penetrating the bush now and uh, there's new leaves, new foliage and even seedlings are germinating inside the path pathways on, uh, of the elephants. Okay, and what about any negative impacts that the elephants are having? Uh, one of our indicator uh, trees, plant species here is the Scotia latifolia, the large leaf Scotia. These trees are very highly fav favourable to the elephants. They debark the, the trees and um, they eat the bark, they eat the leaves. And, um, and also a lot of these trees have been pushed over. Mm. And uh, we could see the damage now, unfortunately because the elephants are more in a confined area mm -hmm. and uh, their migration route has been restricted. Um, there's a lot of acacia sweet fawn in this area and uh, especially a lot of the elephant bulls push these trees over mm -hmm. and um, they dig out the roots, they only eat the roots because it's nice and sweet and moist and then they less leave the rest of the tree to die. So on Scotia, how do you manage those negative effects? Uh, we found that wherever there was bees in a tree um, the beehives, the, the elef and the elephants came to feed on those trees. Uh, the bees came out and stung the elephants around the sensitive areas, around the eyes and the ears, and the elephants left the trees. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we put about 150 to 200 beehives under these big Scotia trees. Mm -hmm. So far it worked about 60%. The other 40% is because of the elephants' uh, intelligence. Um, you know, winter gets really cold here and the bees get a bit more dormant and the elephants took advantage of that. So they learned that in the winter they can still attack the trees? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So overall, do you think that it's a good thing having elephants here at Scotia again? I believe so. Uh, I believe it's, uh, it's a very good thing. It's good for the environment. Look, I believe the positive has outweighed the negatives much, much more. So it's clear that in keeping elephants fenced in, there are always going to be problems with overpopulation and habitat destruction that need to be properly managed. 
However, the positive aspects that Etienne has touched upon here, and also their commercial benefit, adds to the argument for their reintroduction. And just seeing these incredible animals back in a land that once formed their original habitat makes the endeavour even more worthwhile. Yeah.